good day, awesome people, wonderful people. Today's video is going to be a follow-up of windy conditions in a tanker, and in addition to that, dealing with curves. Quick video, a subscriber asked me to go in more depth into it, I'll gladly do it. That's today's video, let's get into it. Hello, everybody. We back. So on today's video, like I said, we're going to talk about a follow up of windy conditions. I'm going to go a little more in depth and then some curves and things like that. So y'all can sit back, enjoy the scenery. It was a beautiful day on this day. We're going south on US 35 in West Virginia. This is a busy, busy truck route. Um, this is the way you drop down into like Charleston, South, South Carolina. One of the ways, shall I say. They're actually working on the second part of this highway to connect it. I think they got a little bit, uh, maybe about a year left on it, a little less than that. So here soon we won't even be back here. But let's talk about the windy conditions. Um, first and foremost, before we get too deep into this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. They missing out on this wonderful channel here. Um. So as far as windy conditions, you know, if you've driven a van or a reefer trailer, a box trailer, it won't affect you like that. You know, a tank is considered a low profile vehicle because it's not up in the air and it's not getting smacked on the sides. It's rounded out and it's lower to the ground. You're going to still feel the wind. Don't get it wrong. You're going to feel the wind, but not as bad as a box trailer because it's not hitting you broadside you know the broadside gust is what smacks you and then they it rolls them over um that's not to say you can't roll over in a tanker or whatnot it just won't have as great as an effect on you and you're driving your cab still may feel it just like any other regular cab you know if you have a condo or whatever you you know volvos are notorious for being wind catchers they rock hard in the wind so if you had a Volvo or something like that, you still would feel the effects of the wind. It still may blow you into the next lane, but you won't have such the, the top over ability. Like I said, that don't mean a tank can't blow over, but with the rounded sides, the lower profile, it's not as affected as much. I actually like it. You know, you know, I'll get days where I'm like, man, it's windy, but I ain't days where I'm like, man, I don't know if I can handle this wind today or not more so as I would with a van or a reefer. I've done both. Um, and so just same as a, a flatbed. I've never pulled a flatbed, but I'm going to guess it's the same. You know, it's open. So they're not getting, you know, they'll be able to make it through um, the the windy conditions like a tank more than a van or a reefer would. So it's pretty simple, man. You know, you'll feel the wind. They'll, you may have signs out, high wind advisory, things like that. You know, if the wind's crosswind, you may have to steer into it a little bit. Um, another key thing is to lower your speed when it's windy. You don't want to be going 65, 70. That just creates more of an ability to get blown over or into the next lane. Um, the faster you go, the lighter you are. It's like physics and things like that. I don't know the whole backstory of it. You can Google it. It's 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 actually, it's not even much in depth to it. Just, you know, prepare for it. Both hands on the wheel. You know, the gust is worse than a steady, strong wind all day. Them gusts will catch you off guard, like on an open bridge or something. You may feel the gust, but once again, it won't affect you as much as a, um, 
you know, a 13-6 trailer would or, or whatever. You're not getting hit broadside like that. You got a lot of open space with tanks to go underneath, over top, the sides. You, you're you driving the tank, you look in your mirror, you can see down the sides of it. You can see a car behind you versus like a van or a reefer. If a car was right behind you, you wouldn't see them because you're you're driving a square. With a tank, you're driving a circle. You have more visibility and more openness. So, yeah, it's pretty simple, man. Just... Uh, you know, take your time, be careful. And the main thing is if you feel unsafe, no matter if you're driving a tank or what, or flatbed or whatever, whatever vehicle, if you feel unsafe, the key is to pull it over, man, and contact your dispatch immediately and say, hey, I don't even feel safe right now. I'm going to, you know, wait it out or whatever. And if they force you to drive, man, they don't care about you anyway. So, you know, no company should make a driver feel, drive if he's if he feels unsafe. That's how bad things happen. That's just my opinion, man. Um, so, yeah, pull it over and, and wait till the wind dies down. There'll be times in Wyoming, you know, highway going to be closed. They got that high wind advisory out. You get out there and have a rollover and a wreck, you're getting a ticket for it because you shouldn't even have been on the road. It's your call. They may not close the highway. They're going to put the advisory out, though, for a certain amount of weight or high profile vehicles or whatever. You get out there and roll over, you're going to get in trouble. And that's it. So let's talk about curves. On this route, there's two pretty good curves, um, and you'll have an advanced warning. The sign is as big as the back of a a semi-trailer, probably bigger. Um, we're going to get ready to come up on it here in a second. I'll have a, a, a hard curve to the right. I'll go a little further. Then I'll have another nice curve. It won't be as tight. This is where the rollovers happen because what happens is you go in that curve, you get that load moving, you go too fast. The gravity just pulls you over. Gravity, G-forces, things like that. Um, so we're actually coming up on it. So uh, the key is to break it down, your speed down before the curve. Don't get into the curve and then slam on brakes. That's when you get that surge. You break it down before the curve. You're able to keep a, a smooth, steady pace through the curve. You know, get into the curve. Let your acceleration carry you through the curve. Then when you're coming out of the curve, start getting on the accelerator slow. That keeps the surge to a minimum. That keeps you at a safe, steady pace steady with these tankers no sudden movements if you have a load that's twenty thousand pounds no baffles you're gonna get more side to side motion than a 30 or forty thousand pound load you, you still gonna get the forward to back surge the lower the weight the more surge you're gonna get see i didn't i i smooth slow acceleration through the curve i get up in the speed but not too much i know this route so i know i got another curve coming up now I ain't pat putting along, but see another one, 30 miles an hour. I break it down way, way before that because I know it's coming. That way I got a smooth, steady pace through the curve. 30 mile an hour for the curve, then we know we got a 40 mile an hour construction zone coming up. Look at that. Smooth and steady. I maintain my lane. I wasn't unsafe. The more you can do to keep the low movement at a minimal, the easier it is on you. The easier it is on the equipment, it's just the better day you will have. Getting that load moving back and forth is stressful, same as climbing hills, stuff like that. I'm climbing a hill right now. Uh, you can see, I'm doing, I'm doing 38, speed limit 40. I'm not in a rush because I know I got another curve up here to the left in this construction zone. It's tight right here. Where those trucks are coming south, they have a lot of wrecks in that curve right there. And what happens, people fly in that curve, that's a makeshift shoulder over there they made a lane out of. So it's not it's not smooth. They fly in that curve, last minute, boom, they hit that wall. I don't get in a rush right here. Let this guy do his thing. Solid line. He's going to do his thing. He really should maintain that lane. But, man, you know, you know how it go. Um... You're supposed to keep a solid line, maintain the lane in a solid line until the the, the um, lane dots, you know, you get the dotted line again. So I climbed that little hill right there. Speed limit still 40. I ain't in no rush. You see, I, you know, I'm just enjoying this beautiful sunshine. I came from some icy weather the day before. I ain't making no noise with it, man. I'm just taking it easy, taking it light. It's that simple. This load was like 40, 41 and some change. Um... And uh, 
you know, so it was quick, steady, easy, simple. The win, nothing to panic about. Take it easy. Take it slow. Pay attention to what your truck is doing. Learn what's normal and what's not for your truck. With these tanks, you're getting going to get movement. Learn what's normal movement. Learn what's movement is not. Should I panic? Should I slow down? What should I do? The key with ramps is to slow down before you get into them. You try to slow down in them and make a sudden stop, you're going to get yourself in trouble. That's how the rollovers happen. That's how the strong surges happen. That's how the equipment gets teared up. And that's ultimately how people get hurt. So that's it for today, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for being here. Um, I hope everybody, wishing everybody an awesome day, a safe day. Get where you're going safely. Call your loved ones. Tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. We got something on the shoulder. You know, I'm going to get over and do my thing. He walking. I'm going to give him his space. I'm going to hop back over. But most importantly, love on somebody today, man. Be the reason somebody smiles. And I'll catch everybody next time. This Trucking with Sir Mill. We out.